What's going on, guys? Welcome back to No Legs, No Problem TV. This is a very special episode for me because I am sitting in my younger brother Wesley's podcast studio. I like to call it the fart box. The fart box, That's correct. yeah. So uh, the audio should be really good because we're coming straight from his really good mics. And we're just going to talk about some uh, past life experiences. Uh, not past life. Oh, we can. My, my life experiences from my past, not a past life. You know, this is how me and my brother get when we're together, so just pardon me. So just, guys, sit back and enjoy the show. So if you're ready, come on. Don't tell me what to do. Welcome back to the Kentucky Kernels of Truth. We are your guides to the weird and wacky and wild and wonderful, and Kate does this better than I do. Hey, it's me, Wes Brown, and we are uh, doing a midweek, a bonus, a mini. I don't have a name for them yet, but it's going to be fun. I've got a special guest in the, in the studio with me today, and it's Neil Brown. No relation. Yeah, well, no, none, none that we claim until mom calls us for dinner. <laughs> That's correct. Neil's my older brother. Uh, Neil, you are familiar with the show, correct? Uh, no, I didn't Don't even know. know that you... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've actually been listening and been rather surprised at the quality. So, yeah, I, I've, I've kind of enjoyed it. It's, it's a little out of my purview for the things that I normally listen to, but mm-hmm. it's been very enjoyable, and I plan on listening to it some more. Oh, great, great. Well, it's really going to expand uh, your audience because we've got 17 people that listen. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I was like talking about the analytics. Yeah, we've got a new person in Australia. In Australia, you know what? I have about, I think I only have 60 or 70 um, viewers in Australia because what Wes hasn't told you is that I am also author B. Neil Brown, Amazon bestselling author. And I have a YouTube channel. I'm also on Amazon Prime. I'm on CocoScope, although I just started with CocoScope because I just found out the other stuff that's on CocoScope anyway, but several different outlets. And my channel is called No Legs, No Problem TV. And I am a triple amputee. Uh, I have lost both of my legs below the knees. And partially my left hand so i have no complete fingers on my left hand and i'm freaking left-handed so anyway um i have a youtube channel i've got roughly 10 to eleven thousand um subscribers and viewers across all of my uh media outlets so um so for all you people that are already listening to wesley before I introduce him to my subscribers and viewers. You guys know that you were in before the kill. That's, I mean, it's all I'm saying. Well, all right. Well, yeah. Uh, what have I? What have I uh, invited you here for today besides self promotion? Oh, well, that's that's all I do. Is oh, okay. Self-promotion. Well, we're done. I'll stay, yeah, yeah. Well, no, maybe not. Well, um, you know, along the lines of Wes's podcast and and i haven't met kate and kate's husband i can't remember kevin. His name, kevin and then the kid that's not supposed to talk but does talk whatever <laughs> his name is um i have a lot of experiences along those lines and and i have been telling wesley stories for years that he immediately rolls his eyes at but he's always saying you need to tell us one of those stories oh, yeah. on the podcast so so I am here today because uh, Wes wanted to uh, have me talk about one of those experiences from when I was a teenager. And for your viewers that may be coming here, and just as a reminder to my own listeners, all 25 of you, uh, this podcast is about the strange history of Kentucky. Everything from true crime, which is very popular, to strange historical events like the Louisville sewer explosion, uh, to strange legends and folk tales, and just high, what I like to call high strangeness, uh, uh, which could be anything from Bigfoot to UFOs, lake monsters, uh, things that are worth 
recording and talking about. And you've got a few of those stories. Oh, I have. I have quite a few over the years. Uh, things that uh, I have seen, and I'll just to give a give a taste mm-hmm. to your listeners. Are they listeners? Or are they subscribers? They are listeners. They are listeners. They can subscribe, but to, to, to listen, they must subscribe. They, so. To listen, they must subscribe. So, um, And they can be for day viewers, because I will be filming this episode, and you guys want to see what Wesley actually looks like. There he is right there. So, uh, and you can find that at No Legs, No Problem TV. Um, but I've had, just to give you a quick rundown, we have a haunted house that before Wesley was born, that me and our older brother, Kyle, we used to go to. This is uh, a good one because we've talked about this before on, on a previous episode, but now you actually have experience, so everybody gets to hear about that. Yeah, so there's that. Um, let's see. There's, of course, uh, a multitude, a plethora, if you will, of haunted graveyards and things like that. Uh, I've never had a Bigfoot sighting. I did see a black bear um, in a lot of the areas that you guys will sometimes you guys will sometimes hear Wes talk about the area behind the house where we grew up at, and yes. he could go back there. Well, I used to to uh, traipse around there uh, a bunch as a teenager, and I saw a black bear back there once. And there are not supposed to be any black bear here in Kentucky. And I've I've told you this story, Wes. Yeah, and but, I've been back there. I used to go up there when I was like, not, uh, we moved in when I was about ten or eleven ish, and I was traipsing around there as a tween. You should have told me about that. Not, just like I could have got Narnia into that that uh, that <laughs> that mine hole that no, the mine the mine shaft that's yeah. down behind my my garage now. Yeah, uh, yep. no one told me about that, so I could have got Narnia, and also could have got a uh, mauled to death by a damn black bear well it was i I was probably 16 it was the first fall that not even quite fall that we were in that house and we moved in moved in that house in 1990 and so you weren't even 10 years old then but you had you would not have gone you had to go about about two or three miles in and you you would not have gotten to where uh, if if you never walked back there far enough to walk past the copperous creeks and and the old mine stuff Mm -hmm. um when you get past that um then uh, i was way up in the hills and that's where i saw saw a black bear up there but that's but that's the black bear is not not really what i wanted to share i just just a little tidbits of some Mm -hmm. of the things i've seen but uh i think you wanted me to talk about the black dog experience old chuck yeah let's hear about that old chuck not for my subscribers and my viewers it's not fluffy it's just a black dog so it's it was a long long time ago i was 16 or 17 somewhere around that age uh age range and i uh uh you know we used to go running around on the weekends all the time it's not like it is today where you can spend an entire weekend playing Fortnite. um you had to go out and find things to do so on any given weekend we were cruising around in our cars literally cruising around at 10 or 15 miles an hour or we were on the back country roads and if you were my age at that time everybody around here knew a place called hammerhead hill so it used to be called what hogshead hill and no goatheads hill it had several names over the years didn't it's it? as far as i know it's always been called hammerhead hill okay i because I, I looked into it at one time it's it, you know which hill stuff like that. i'm sorry keep going oh no no that's that's all right that's uh uh I, i've always heard it as hammerhead hill and there are lots of stories about especially during the uh uh what do they call it the the, the uh this the devil worshiping craze oh yeah because they used to when you'd go back there uh like you know People were into heavy metal and stuff, and they would spray paint pentagrams and crap back up there. And that was teenagers just being teenagers. Yeah, that that was. So they used to talk about, well, there was there was witches up there, or there was devil worshiping going on up there, and 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 as far as I know, there was there was never anything like that. But what it was was a backcountry road that it was a back way to get from the backside of Providence, Kentucky, to almost the backside of Clay. 
Kentucky, and it goes over Hammerhead Hill. It's a road that goes over Hammer, and it's very windy. Um, it's about a lane and a half wide. So you know, you if you pass somebody on the on that road, you have to get over pretty far. There's there's no lines painted on it. There might be now, but back then there right. wasn't. And 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 we used to go back there. I say we. It was never me because I wasn't very good with a spray can. But people would paint the road um, and do true artwork, and it would. I can remember that that there was that there was probably a good eighth of a mile that was almost covered with with. I can't even call it graffiti because it was just such such artistic quality stuff. And then they paved the road. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, that's where y- you might go if you were. Um, had just gone just you know just come from the bootlegger's house because there was no place to buy beer around here uh and you were going to crack open a beer and go cruise the country back roads which is something i definitely don't condone now right. and bootlegging was a thing because this was a dry county yeah there is uh you know, I, I could, I could spend an entire episode talking about a bootlegger that that used to be a client of mine uh, that was down at Wheatcroft and the stories that old fellow would tell. But anyway, so you'd go to a bootlegger and if you might have a six pack of beer and you guys go cruising the back roads, something like that. Well, you would go to Hammerhead Hill, especially if you had your lady friend with you. You know, um, that's just always one of those things. The scary, spooky places, um, that's where you took your girl because she'd get a little scared and hug up on you. And that's exactly what you were looking for. And anyway, so Hammerhead Hill, when you turn off of, I think it's White Oak Road. I could, what, what near what town was it near? Um, it's it's out past if you go through Diamond, mm-hmm. all right, and and right as you get outside of Diamond, you go through the open stretch. Um, I can't remember if it's before or after the uh, county dump, right? Um, but you you'd hang a left, and I'm pretty sure you turned off a off a White Oak Road. It was right out off a White Oak stretch. Is this this is on 41A? No, it's oh. on it's on 109. Okay, I'm thinking of a different dump. Yeah. Um, K- Kentucky Road. <laughs> <laughs> no, How do you get anywhere in Kentucky? Well, you go up past the cornfield, you pass the dump, and but uh, anyway, so it's out that way. And you turn on it, and immediately you start heading uphill. And I'd been out there just just a blue million times with friends and it's this has been so long see i this has literally been 30 years ago for me Uh, but i've but it's always hung in my head because it was such a a weird experience but we would go and we you turn on this road and you'd go you would drive you couldn't drive it fast you drove it slow and everybody's talking and this was back when when the cars we drove were land yachts and people could actually sit in the back seat that was back when you were driving the diplomat that was back in the diplomat days i remember the diplomat in 1979 dodge diplomat with the rich corinthian leather <laughs> um but no, it didn't have leather seats. Uh, but Ricardo Montalban, Montalban, however you pronounce his last I'll fix name, it in post. No, I won't. Yeah, he won't fix it in post. But but he exactly. he did he did do a, a commercial for for Dodge, rich, caliente, and leather. Anyway, so you know, I had a big enough back seat that people could people could sit back there. Plenty of room for Jesus and snacks, right? Yeah, pretty plenty of room for Jesus and snacks. It was, because there nothing ever went on in that back seat. I would, anyway. So I I'm pretty sure that when this happened that I had a old buddy of mine that I haven't spoken to in years. Occasionally I like one of his posts on Facebook. Is one you know, but um but he was in the back seat with his girlfriend and I'm pretty sure that my girlfriend was in the front seat with me and we turned on Hammerhead. And so we're sipping our brews and we're cruising along and when you get to a certain portion of hammerhead they kind of cut into the side of a hill and so you have embankments right. on, on both sides uh, of the road you, you and, encounter that a lot around here yeah you get that a lot because kentucky is all here people think of kentucky and they think mountains but the mountains are all in eastern kentucky right. o- over here we have foothills um, now, if you're from like Southern Illinois, where everything is completely flat, or Kansas, or part of Oklahoma, uh, you know the flatlands out in Texas and all that, um, you would look at these and go, well, "These are mountains." Now, these are just hills, so they just cut right through the sides of them. 
And so anyway, so I had been driving and talking and not really paying attention. And out of the corner of my eye, as I'm driving up this road, I kept seeing something kind of pacing us outside of the car in the tree line up the embankment so i so i could only catch it for a moment because i would look i'd have to look up and this thing if the car was sitting still the top of the embankment was probably three feet above the top of the car okay what time of night was this you know i could it, it was after dark okay so you know i could what, what time of year um well i remember i remember leaves so um on the trees i think i do so okay. it, it had so it probably wasn't well i know it wouldn't have been winter time right. because i didn't do things like that in the winter in the winter time winter time right. was all t- taken up with with wrestling in high school and things like so, that so, so past eight thirty. so it was probably past eight thirty, and it probably wasn't winter time uh and in the summertime it's at night it's you know eight thirty or nine o'clock so so anyway we're driving and you know and i'm catching something out of the corner of my eye kind of pacing us just like if you're driving down the road and you see a deer on the side of the road and you catch it for just a second that's what i thought to begin with and we're not going fast right so we're talking might have been going 20 miles an hour probably slowing down when we're laughing too hard at mm-hmm, at, mm-hmm. at something or another and speeding back up a little bit but probably 15 or 20 miles an hour cruising down this road and I keep seeing this thing, and I got a good look at it one time, and it was large. It was, say, St. Bernard or better sized. Mm-hmm. And it was black or very dark in color, and it had red glowing eyes. And it was pacing our car. And by the time that I figured out what I saw, I mean, you know, for a lot of people, I'll say this, that see things that have never really experienced being uh, where we're from. And, you know, I've been in I've been going out in the woods since I was a little kid, you know, Mm -hmm. hunting and everything else. I know what a deer looks like. Right. I know what things like this look like. I thought I was saw I saw a big dog that was pacing us, and right. it, and it didn't freak me out too bad until I saw the red glowing eyes. Right, and and there was no houses around. There were no roadsides around to really reflect the light. And I know that cats' eyes will can reflect red. Um, I don't know what color really dogs' eyes are. I, I I I got into this one time because I was. Do, uh, there is a structure within animals' eyes, not human eyes, or any other large primate eyes, called the. Oh, it's a Latin term. I can't remember it. Uh, but there is a structure, a light gathering structure in the animals' eyes that takes in light and reflects it back, which gives them excellent night vision, but piss poor color vision. Right. Um, but yeah, red, yellow, or blue. And so this was a big dog type creature, and I saw the red red lie. I saw the red eyes, and I decided that um, I was going to have an oh shit moment, and I sped up mm-hmm. because it freaked me out. I we weren't high. We were, you know, back in the day, it took a lot more than a half a can of beer to. Uh, to get me seeing weird things right so there was really none of that um i and i was driving so i wasn't slamming back beers uh, or anything like that um and i sped up and everybody in the car went you know what's going on and i went you know oh crap there's something chasing us or Mm -hmm. following us and it's got red eyes and so they made me stop. Everybody's looking out the windows. They didn't see anything. And so, okay, must have just saw something. Didn't didn't know what it was. But, you know, I'd watched it paces for a while. When I got the red eyes, I went, oh, crap. And I, and it, I it was just the floor. one. Was, was there one on the other side of you? I tr- no. Okay. No, no, there was not. Um, but 
so I sped up for just a minute. Everybody made me stop. Mm-hmm. And once again, there's embankments on both sides, and the embankments are kind of coming and going. So you drive out of the embankments and the sides, this, you see the sides of the earth beside the road, yeah. you know, going back down and then coming back up. Like waves. Yeah, like waves as you're driving past. Well, when I got back up to the next embankment, a bloody rabbit. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Landed on top of the hood squealing and if you've never heard a rabbit squeal it's the most horrendous thing in the world Uh, if you've never been rabbit hunting and had to step on a rabbit head that first time (laughs) you know to make it stop squealing you just want it to stop and so it's squealing it hit the hood Mm -hmm. and it rolled up onto onto the windshield right and and it got some blood um, and hair. Of course, rabbit hair, you can blow on it, and, ra- and a yeah. rabbit hair will fall off. Um, got on the windshield, and then it just scrambled and sh- took off. Really? Okay. Yeah. So, Because, of course, when that happened, I stopped. Mm-hmm. Stopped the car. Um, and I was so absorbed in the rabbit for a moment that when I stopped watching the rabbit, because it came from the driver's side embankment oh boy landed on top of the hood rolled up squealed doing all its stuff and then for everything it was worth it took off to the passenger side and off to the passenger side of the car and then and where it went from there i honestly don't know and at that moment um once we got calmed down i looked back outside and i saw the red eyes again Mm -hmm. and then they and i know it was an animal and I wasn't seeing something through the trees because I saw it blink. Right. You know, I, I saw I saw both both red spots blink out for for a moment, and they did it together. Mm-hmm. And then they were gone. And then we all decided that that was a buzzkill. Right. And that As it would be. We were going to find something else to do. And I don't know what it was. Now, back in the day. Um, I probably thought it was something horrible that was stalking us, you know, um, because I was a teenager and, you know, right. we're, you know, teenagers are stupid. And and honestly, if, if you're under the age of 25, your brain hasn't developed yet. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. You'll believe anything. Um, and I know this because I have a 23 year old, but he probably won't ever listen to this podcast. So um, anyway. You know, I, I probably thought it was something much, much worse. Uh, and probably the first time I ever told you, I probably implied as much. But I look back over it over the years, and it wasn't a cat. Right. I, I have seen bobcats, mm-hmm. and I have seen um, panthers, pumas, you know, mountain lions. Right. Uh, you know, a, a little cat runs the same way a big cat in the United States run. Lions run differently, but but the mountain lions and, and the bobcats and the wildcats uh, around here, they run like a, you know, if you've seen a house cat run, you've, you've seen a, a big cat in the United States right. run. It didn't run like that. It ran like a dog. It loped hmm. like a dog. Hmm. It didn't trot like a deer or a pony or anything else. So this was a big dog. And I have to look back on it now and rationalize it and say it was chasing after a rabbit and it just happened to be keeping pace with me. Right. It got hold of the rabbit Mm -hmm. and then the rabbit got loose Mm -hmm. and jumped off the embankment and landed on my car. That's what I tell myself now. Yeah. But is that actually it? skeptic would say of course that's exactly what it was but i don't know for sure because it was creepy but yeah. Hammer, but hammerhead you had, hill you had, you had an experience yeah i had an experience and and i can tell you that uh, the girl that was with me at the time hung on to me awful damn tight for the rest of the night so mission accomplished right <laughs> but uh um but definitely not the way i planned and and then we left we left there we went back out to the highway and we went to clay where there used to be a car wash and uh we hosed off hosed the blood off off of the car i mean we i had we had to wash the blood off the car mm-hmm. so 
that's my black dog experience. Well, guys, it was at about this point that my camera died. So if you'd like to see the full unedited episode, go check out the Kentucky Kernels of Truth. All the links will be in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this black dog story, and I will see you on the next episode.